in just about every appeal denial that we see, or I should say long-term disability denial that we see, it has a medical file review done by a physician hired by an insurance company. And these file reviews are done by doctors that have, I'd say 99% of the time, never spoken to the claimant, and they've also never examined the claimant as well. And this is the basis that just about every disability insurance company will rely upon to deny a claim. So I want to spend a few minutes to talk about what the problems are with these particular file medical review ports, reports and how often you're seeing them and is it appropriate for a disability insurance company to review on a report from a doctor that's never seen the claimant. So let, let's start with the beginning with well, the last question. Is it, is it appropriate for them to just hire an outside doctor and let him review records and then make an opinion? Unfortunately, yes. There's case law out there that says that could be enough to deny a claim. So insurance companies, whether it's Cigna, Unum, Aetna, Hartford, they have the same formula for denying cases and often all that they do is have this quote unquote independent physician review or review the medical records in your claim and this doctor who's obviously being paid by the insurance company more often than not sides with the insurance company saying this person either um, has the ability to perform the duties of their own occupation or whether it's the any occupation stage. Um, so they do these file reviews and they say these people they do have certain restrictions and limitations and it's always very, very less, or not, very, not a lot of restrictions and limitations, or they say they have no restrictions and limitations, and it seems always to, to, you know, to fly in the face of the treating physicians that my client is seeing. Um, more often than not, I see the same names, and you know, I see thousands and thousands of denial letters. I've reviewed, you know, I've countless numbers of claim files. Uh, I've seen so many different reviews. And, you know, in most cases, they'll do one, maybe two reviews. And I see the same names occurring over and over again. So it's very common to use the same doctors, even in different insurance companies. They, they utilize the same doctors. There's probably a list out there that I don't know where they get it from, but the same doctors are given the same reviews over and over again. And it's part of their formula for denying cases. And so these doctors are doing these file reviews. They're getting paid three, four, five hundred dollars $500 an hour to do these reports. And they more often than not find that the claimant's not disabled. But what disturbs me about it, and it flies in the face of our whole medical treatment culture, is that how are they rendering these opinions without even seeing the claimant? It's, it's something that it's hard to explain. You know, like you said earlier, they've never um, evaluated this person. They've never seen this person. I mean, they've never even laid eyes on this person, more often than not. Every now and then they'll have a chance to review surveillance. More often than not, they have no idea what this person um, looks like. They don't have any idea what this person, let's say their back condition, what their gait is like. They don't have any surveillance that's showing them walking. They have nothing. I mean, they're just doing a file right. review. Assuming they don't get sent the surveillance. Exactly. Every now and then they do surveillance and they get right. sent the surveillance, but more often than not, they do not. So they're just rendering a decision, um, you know, basically playing the Monday morning quarterback. And they're just looking for, for situations where the doctor didn't say this. You know, not every single medical report is going to be, have every single thing listed in the history of the world that this patient or client is going through. And they try to say, oh, the doctor never said this, so we must deny this case because they didn't uh, do this testing or the range of motion is normal um, or whatever it may be. They're just looking for little ways to get around uh, paying the benefits. All right. Well, on a, on a positive note on these reports, I find them <clears throat> usually where we can use the word beat them um, show better evidence than these reports for the obvious reason that number one they've never seen the claimant so they don't know what's really going on with the claimant they're only looking at cold records number two I find that the quality of doctors that are doing these medical reviews are crappy I mean they're just not good they don't do thorough reviews they often don't consider the occupational requirements of the claimant so they just look at the records they go off something that the disability company told them about the standard of what kind of occupation the person might have. Often they don't even mention the occupation. And if they don't know the occupation, then how do they know how the restrictions and limitations that they're suggesting are going to apply to that particular claimant? That's correct, they don't. I mean, what's, what's good about these bad reviews that it gives our hope for our clients when we have to file the lawsuit, that it gives us arguments for the court to show the judge that these bad reviews aren't worth the paper that they're written on and it gives hope for us to win the lawsuit. You know, it's hard to win these lawsuits because we have to deal with an arbitrary and capricious standard, but more often than not, we can go through these reviews and find severe faults in them to give our clients hope. Well, what's great 
about the reviews is that these doctors, often retired doctors who can't get jobs anywhere else anyhow, they <clears throat> write these reports and say things that they think make sense to like only doctors and they think that they're going to fool the courts. And the good news is, is that most of the time the courts are not being fooled by them just making up particular things like, for example, someone has fibromyalgia or somebody has IBS. And they say, well, there's no objective evidence in the medical records to support that this person is having this condition or these symptoms. Well, and, and because they're a doctor and they said that, well, therefore that should be true. But it's completely not true because there is no objective evidence of something like fibromyalgia. There is no test to show you have IBS or those kinds of things. There is no test for someone who has chronic pain to say, yes, they're in pain or no, they're not in pain. So what they do is they just pick apart a doctor's medical record where they may not say that the person was in pain today, and therefore they make the assumption that there's no pain for that patient. So um, good news is, in my opinion, is that the courts and the judges are seeing through this, and they're not allowing necessarily those particular reviews to have more weight than the opinion of a treating physician. Everything you're saying is so true, and I've actually seen... Um, for two different cases that I'm litigating, a Hartford case and a Cigna case, where one of their reviewing doctors has said that anyone with chronic pain or fibromyalgia, that there's no restrictions or limitations, um, that, the, you know, that the claimant should have no restrictions or limitations for anyone suffering from fibromyalgia or chronic pain. And it just seems absurd and, and unbelievable that a doctor could actually say that because there's, there's, docu there's documentation out there. There's, you can look anywhere. Fibromyalgia and chronic pain are real. Right. And if you're suffering from those conditions, there's restriction limitations that are associated with those conditions. Right. And then you get a lot of these doctors are hired by these third-party companies, like these MES yeah. or um, many of them, Doctor's Choice, and all these different companies that go out and hire these physicians. And I think, and we've seen it before, where these third-party companies are writing up all the medical record reviews. They're sending a couple questions to the doctors, and the doctors are bringing back questions, but they really haven't even looked at all of the information. Again, it can result in a denial, and often does, because we you know, do a lot of appeals and lawsuits, but we can pick that apart, and you have to know how to do that in order to win these cases, which is what we love to do for our clients. Certainly. Even if there is a a doctor's report saying that you should be able to get back to work, all hope is not lost by any means whatsoever. Right. Okay. So if you are in a situation where you're trying to understand what this file medical or internal medical review from what they call a quote medical consultant, give us a call. We're happy to review your claim. We can help you anywhere in the country. We will always offer you a free consultation and we look forward to the opportunity to speak with you.